Yeah, so come and stand in the middle of the mat, feet hip width apart. Just remember to get a little bit of tension underneath the arch. There's a little bit of a softening under the knee and then just tuck that pelvis under. Find pelvic floor, front bit and that back bit. TVA where that tummy button sits to start to draw that back towards the spine. And there's a little bit of hollowing down towards the hips with the TVA. Try not to hold the breath, lift the rib cage, shoulders down and back. Length at the back of the neck, crown of the head, shining up towards the ceiling. And we're going to go pelvic floor TVA, pull in, fast, slow release. 10 times, pelvic floor TVA, big squeeze, pull in 100% and slow release. And again, pelvic floor and TVA and slow release and pulling in. Try and keep the shoulders relaxed and release and pulling in. Slow release, five left, pulling in and slow release. Try not to hold the breath, pulling in and slow release, three left, pulling in, and slow release, and two, pulling in, and slow release, last one, 100% pulling in, slow release it down to 50% the engagements, all in there, and we're going to take, just go to a scapula set, so take the shoulders down and back, elbows tucked into your sides, just opening, send the thumbs backwards, and then recentering. Try not to arch in the lower back, so keep that pelvis in the same position, tucked under. And a challenge if you want it, it's a bit early for a balance, but if you want a challenge, take a star balance. So just literally lift one leg to the side, try not to tilt with the hips, and then see if you can carry on with your scapula set. Shoulders down and back. And it's breathing out as the thumbs go backwards. And then we can just switch sides if you're taking that balance and so just drift it over, lift the other leg. Keep working with the scapula set. Should feel those shoulder blades getting that little bit of a squeeze. Keep your elbows tucked into your sides. Shoulders down and back. Don't let the shoulders tilt. If you're letting your hips tilt, don't let the shoulders go with that. Two more. Breathing out. Keep engaging with that pelvic floor. Reason to bring the feet down, breathing in, arms up over the head, big circle, watch your, watch your lampshades, and all the way around. <laughs> breathing in, lift, breathing out, coming down. And this one, you can really let the shoulders lift up to the ears, and then kind of take them right back to the back pockets. Keep the pelvis tucked under. Just see how wide and how big you can take these circles with the arms. So always think about reaching up to the ceiling and then reaching to the sides with those fingertips. Adding in, go up onto the toes. So it's just starting to wake up ankles, calf muscles, taking a bit of a balance. And the crown of the head is shining up to the ceiling. So keeping that length there at the back of the neck, into that lift, keeping that connection there, pelvic floor and TVA. Two more big circles with the arms, taking that stretch. Last one. Placing the heels down, lift one arm up to the shoulder, ear down to shoulder, it's the shoulder glide with the neck release. Reach out to the side, place your hand on the hip with this just to stop that hip from drifting across. Recenter, arm up to ceiling, then over into your side bend. You can add in the release and just taking circles here with this dangling arm. And again, just reaching all the way around the space that you've got there. Just a couple of times and then release. We'll go to the other side. It's left. Ear down, neck release. Hand on hip to keep that hip still. Reach. Recenter, try not to hold the breath. Reaching up. Going over for that side bend. And then just work into your circles. Perhaps three one way and then three the other. Still engaging pelvic floor and that TBA. And release once more on each side. So it's left. 
Ear nice and slow down to shoulder. Then reach to the side, hips still. Pull in these core muscles, recenter. Reach up, over into your side bend. This time you could circle, you could take a really big circle and actually catch just the fingertips of that side bend arm. Three one way, three the other. Breathing in into that side stretch. And then releasing back up last time, other side. Arm up, level with the shoulder, ear down. Into that shoulder blade, just hand on hip, that hip still. Recentering and lift. Over for the side bend. And again, just taking those really super big circles, exploring all the space to the side of the body. If you can, maybe just drifting past the other hand, other way around. Keep engaging, pelvic floor, TVA. Press the feet down into the floor. And recenter. Take cross leg arms, so just holding opposite elbows and see if you can kind of rest your forearms on the top of the head. And then in a sense, you'll get whether the crown of the head is shining to the ceiling because we want the length of the back of the neck lift a little bit on the chin and then all we're going to do is go for the side bend soften the knees slightly drift that forwards towards your forward fold knees are nice and soft as a lower back release take it over to the other side to your side bend and drawing it back up then over back i mean back the other way so side bend soften the knees come down to what would be a forward fold slowly uncurl to the other side. Two more, and if you choose, you could maybe lengthen the legs slightly, take the bend out of the knees, pulling in the core for this to support that lower back. Last one, sundial. Breathing in to rise back up to center and release. I'm gonna go to our squats then. So you might wanna go a bit wider with the feet and we're gonna put twists into these squats. So I'm gonna show you sideways on for this. So start with the arms up level with your shoulders, shoulders down and back. The first twist then up for a half rainbow and all the way open into the chest. Then recentering that back over, other side. Half a rainbow open into the chest. Think about reaching the hands away from each other. Then we're gonna go down into a nice squat. Then lifting out and then come down halfway. Then elbows onto the knees. Again, we're just lifting one arm up to the ceiling, in, working into the chest and just switching that over for the twist. From the squat, rising back up, take a nice good squat again, so there's a squat in the middle. And then we come all the way down towards the floor. It's hard for me to show you. Place your hands in between sort of your knees and then again, arm up to ceiling and you can push the elbow against the knee to help you get into your twist and then the other side. So then from your low squat, lift all the way back up, take a squat and rise, ready for the rainbow twist at the top. And then come back to center, other side. Think about those hands reaching away from each other. Take a nice deep squat, bend the knees. Left, then squat to halfway. Into those nice opening, especially with the chest. You can really use your elbows against the knee, looking up, rising back out, take a squat. Hips back into space, squeeze those glutes all the way down to the floor, hands on the floor, arms inside the knees, reaching one arm up. Again, just working with that twist, switch it over, push the elbow into the knee, come out of that nice low squat. One more time, into your squat. Don't let the arches drop. Now this time, if we always went with the same arm first, go into the other arm. So, into that rainbow chest stretch. Try and keep the hips facing forwards. Into your squat, don't let the knees pronate. 
rising back out halfway down. Again, choosing the arm that doesn't naturally come first into those nice twists in the center. Then lifting back out, take a squat. Squeeze the glutes to rise all the way down on this one, hands down to the mat. One arm up to the ceiling, but perhaps if you can, looking up, switching over, rising back out. Last time, take a squat. And lifting back out. So this is a balance. So basically what we're gonna do is take the leg behind us, so just point the toes, nice straight leg. If you need to hold on to something, that's fine. And then just see if we can lift the arms up, kind of so we're all in a nice straight line with the arms and that pointy leg. <laughs> and then we're gonna release and then we're gonna bring that leg forwards and take the arms back. It's like a, we've got like a cape behind us and then again. And then you can kind of go deeper into this one so you can take that leg higher and the arms kind of keep them level. And then same thing, take it back. So you have to really use your big toe. You have to engage the arch underneath the foot. <laughs> and then lifting back. Then we're gonna switch this over. So as the leg, as this leg is forwards, the arms are up. And as the legs go, as the leg goes back, you go into that cape position, squeezing into the glute. And it's just two more, so it's three of each one of those. So as the leg goes forwards, the arms go up. And then switch it over. Follow the leg with the arms. Take the shoulders down and back. Squeezing in the glute, last one. Woo. Leg forwards, arms up. And then leg back, arms back. Then release. Kind of tricky, right? <laughs> Let's go to the other one. So we started this way. So when the leg, the um, the leg comes forward, I can't remember how we started now. Can anyone remember? <laughs> ah. Oh yeah, the arms are back. <laughs> and then when the leg goes back, the arms go forward. It's good for the brain. And then we do that two more times. So a small cape position. You, Engage the triceps, reach forward. You can work on how high you take that leg, squeeze the glutes. Keep using the big toe. Keep using the pelvic floor. Try not to hold the breath. Then we can switch it over. So as the leg goes forwards, the arms come up. Then as the leg goes back, find the cape position. A little bit of a squeeze there on the shoulder blades. Lift the chest, shoulders back. Two more. Arms up, leg lifted. Squeeze shoulders, lift chest. Last one. Try not to hold the breath. Nice, a bit of a release, a little bit of a shake out on the legs. We're gonna come down to the mat now. So find yourself a downward dog or a puppy dog. Get yourself comfy, hips up towards the ceiling. Upside down, a V shape. Perhaps you need to walk the dog if your backs of the legs are a little bit tight. Send the chest towards the thighs, spread the fingers. Spiral the biceps towards each other. Thinking about length from the hips coming down the back. Trying to get the arms around the ears. So similar to what we did last week with the leg lift. So take the left leg, bring the knee towards the nose and then extend, bending in the knee and turn that foot around to the side so the hip gets a really good opening. Then sending it back through towards the left elbow and then extend and back around. 
and then over to the right. Breathing out as you lift. So you're getting a really intense stretch there on the right calf muscle. Then just stepping that left foot forwards. Same thing we did last week. So we're going to go for the high lunge, but take the right hand off the mat. And we're going to put in our twist again. So the left arm up to ceiling. And then you can really bump the left hip to the side of the mat. So pushing that left hip out and then go right up on the fingertips on the right hand. Put in the core, so put in pelvic floor and put in TVA. And see if you can get this left arm in line with the right arm. So thinking about that stretch across the chest. Big, a deep breath in. Then re-centering that down. Step that left forward, back to you down with dog, send the hips back up to the ceiling, get the stretch on the backs of the shoulders. And then we'll do the same thing on the right. So knee to nose, drift forward to almost a plank position, and then opening up the hip, bending in the knee. Then right knee towards right elbow. Extend, just enjoying that stretch there on the left leg. Then across to the left. Breathing out, lift. Opening in the hip. Then stepping that forwards to that high lunge position. You can press back towards that left heel. Stepping, so just taking that left hand off the mat. Go up onto those fingertips. Bump the right hip out towards the right side of the mat. Take that big twist. Hand up to ceiling, and again, see if we can line up the arms into a straight line, reach fingertips up to the ceiling. Keep pushing the right hip to the right side of the mat. Take a big deep breath. And then we'll just push it all the way back up into a downward dog. Hips back up there. And maybe you feel a little bit looser after doing these leg lifts. One more breath and then bring that down onto all fours. So take, we're going to take a cat to cow on all fours. So drift your chest forwards, take your shoulders down and back, lifting, then lifting up with the chest. Tuck the toes under that cow position looking up. Then take it to cat position to chin to chest. Really tuck your tummies in. Look towards your knees, tuck your pelvis under, let your feet relax. And then one more time, up into cow, drift the chest forwards. You still need to draw in the core muscles though in the cow position, so still find the TVA, still pull in pelvic floor. And then up to your cat, chin to chest. Then just bring it down to a neutral position, so in between your cat to cow, Pull in pelvic floor, pull in TVA. Take a, take a moment just to check knees and feet are hip width. Hands under shoulders, spread the fingers. And then just take four breaths then. And we'll just do the, what we did last week, breathing into all four corners of the torso. So thinking about the whole of the rib cage and the sides of the rib cage. So breathing in completely. Because sometimes it's only when we think about it that we actually notice we might not have breathing, been breathing in completely. One more deep breath. Sending the breath all four corners. Then similar to last week actually, we're going to take the low hand cheek on the right hand, extend the left leg. Breathing out, lift, extend, squeeze the left glute. Lower, keep the legs straight, and then lift. So we're gonna do two on each side, and then we're gonna switch. And see if we can get a bit of flow with this. So just reaching and lifting, two on each side, and then see if you can swap. Now we're gonna take the control, so notice now, as you do the next, the, the, the second one, do the hips tilt. The first one often we've got the strength to work into the lift, but it's that second one. Sometimes there's a bit of a wobble. So go pelvic floor, go TVA. 
and try and keep their legs straight because then, then there's the challenge there. And then see if you can prevent those hips from tilting in that second repetition. Thinking about length here, so as you extend and you're breathing out, pointing toes, reaching fingertips away from each other. Squeezing the glutes, particularly feeling that with the second repetition. I gaze to the front of the mat. And then maybe now you feel like you've nailed it and you're not tilting in when we repeat. So we'll just go two more times. Adding in if you choose, take the balance. So lifting up the back foot. And again, just see if you can keep those hips still. <laughs> Last time, each side. Breathing out to left. Squeezing those glutes, hips still. Releasing, we're going to take a low lunge, so just stepping the left foot forwards. And then just bring yourself upright. Put in pelvic floor, put in TVA, tuck the pelvis under so we're not arching in lower back. And we did this one last week, and it's a nice little test to see if we're going to get any further. Reaching right hand up to the ceiling, left hand down to the floor, it's the side bend. And we did it last week just to maybe see where we are with it. Sometimes you can put a block or something here, which can help. I mean, obviously you can always put your elbow on your knee as well. But eventually you might get fingertips down to the floor. Take a big deep breath. And then we're released from there, we'll go to the other side. Just check your hip width. Coming up to the upright position, pelvic floor in, TVA in. Shoulders relaxed, left hand up towards the ceiling and then just slowly see if you can reach the right fingertips down towards the mat. Try not to force it, demora, no resistance, surrender. Take a big deep breath. So we're released from there, we come all the way down on our fronts to the mat, to our swan dive position, the cactus out the arms. Forehead down towards the mat. Breathing out, lift head and shoulders. Try and keep the crown of the head in line with the spine. Breathing in lower. Keeping connection with that pelvic floor and the TVA. Breathing out, lift, breathing in, lower. Try and get a bit of a lightness now on the arms so we're not pushing down too much. Ready to start lifting the arms up. And it's breathing out, lifting, arms, head, shoulders, still looking down. Breathing in, lower. Again, keeping that crown of head in line with the spine. Adding in again, breathing out, lift, breathe in, and then breathe out. Reach the arms forwards to the extension. Then come back to cactus and lower. So I'll give you another version, another progression, and it would be to press the, uh, the fronts of the mat, push up into what we call the cobra position, Shoulders back, lifting up the chest, come down and then work into your extension from there. So it's come to cobra, eye gaze can go forwards, come down to what would be that almost cactus, lift and extend. It's almost like a real slow motion um, for swan dive. Obviously the swan dive has the rocking motion so you lift up like that and then extend. So if you want to try, you lift and then you find yourself rocking towards your chest. <laughs> so up to you if you want to take the slow motion. 
or you like to work with the fast one. So lots of different layers I put in there for people to try. Whichever one you're on, just take one more. Breathing up for your extensions. And then we're going to release that with a cat stretch, so back on all fours. Chin to chest, tuck the pelvis under, look to the knees. Tuck the tummies in, just send that breath between the shoulder blades. Breathing in completely. And I'm going to put in another kind of um, stretch for the hips. So we're going to take the pigeon pose. So just bringing the left knee towards the left um, hand. So we're keeping it nice and low here. And the, the left foot just kind of uh, relaxes to the side. Just take a moment to get nice and upright. Shoulders back and lift up the chest. And then you can bring yourself and just settle down. And you can bring your forehead down to the mat. Just take four deep breaths. I'm going to put in another version for anyone who didn't like that version there. Is you go onto your back. And you hug your knee into your chest. So that's another way of doing pigeon pose for the hips. So a couple more. Just breathing in completely into that pigeon pose. And you can always think about sending the breath to that left hip. And then we're literally going to switch that one over. So come back up to all fours, send the right knee towards the right hand. Set yourself down, left foot can come in. You don't really need to force that over or bring it over in any sort of way. Just let it naturally kind of find its place. Then lift yourself upright, maybe even using fingertips, pulling in the core. And then just bring yourself down. And then it's four deep breaths. I'm just sending that breath there to the right hip. If you prefer the one where you lie on your back, just thinking that one on the right side. One more deep breath and hopefully muscles are kind of giving away to the resistance, the tightness and kind of easing off for you. Okay, so from there we're going to go to our front leg pulls and elbows underneath the shoulders. Pull in pelvic floor, pull in TVA, lifting up the hips to that hover position. Check you're tucking the pelvis under here. So if you choose, you want to progress, straighten the legs to that front plank position. Try and get the shoulders down away from ears, crown of the head still in line with the spine. Sometimes it's really tempting for the head to drop. So thinking about that head to be in line with the spine. And the length at the back of the neck, the chin slightly tucked under. So whichever one you're on, maybe you're on the knees tucked under. Bring the focus to TBA, so pulling in that tummy button. Pulling tummy button back up to spine. And try not to hold the breath. There's just a static hold on this one today. So 10 more seconds, keep breathing. If you lose concentration, come back to that TVA, come back to, come back to the breath. Five, four, three, two and one and release down have a five second ten second rest <laughs> nearly half the rest then and then we'll do the same but we'll do a high plank for this next one so pelvic floor in tva and lifting up the hips 
This time, just pushing yourself up so the arms are straight. We're not in a falls position, really, because the knees are set back. But we're still tucking pelvis under and we're going to go for that big squeeze of the TVA and we're engaging pelvic floor. Keep that crown of the head in line with the spine. So just in this hold and keeping still, or if you prefer straightening the legs, push back to the heels. But same thing, pelvis tucked under and thinking about that crown of the head in line with the spine. So either one, holding but not holding the breath. And then if you lose concentration, just coming back to the breath or coming back maybe to taking that squeeze on the TVA. It's quite a nice stretch for the feet, that one too, if you're up on high plank. 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Releasing it all the way down. And we're just going to do some fingertip press-ups to finish kind of that little sequence. So a little bit of a rest. Then you need a little bit of space either side of the mat. Come back up to that high plank position. Pelvis tucked under, knees set back. Spread the fingers up onto the fingertips and the hands are off the mat. Bending in the elbows, lower yourself down almost to the low plank and lift yourself back up. So it's almost like moving through those two moves we've just done. If you feel super strong, you could try it with straight legs. I've never done that actually. I don't even want to try. Otherwise we've got the knees down. And it's kind of a really nice way of waking up all those fingertips. And again, noticing if that crown of the head is in line with the spine. Keeping the pelvis tucked under. Keeping, engaging with the TBA and the pelvic floor. Three more. Strengthens wrist, strengthens forearms. Last one. Releasing from there, then we'll come back to a child's pose. So sitting back to the heels. Maybe finding the diamond is quite nice on a connection level. So index fingers together, thumbs together, placing that diamond just in front of the head. So if you can get your forehead down on the mat. Well, sometimes if you can't get it down on a cushion or a block's kind of good. Put it under the forehead. And just gonna go back to those yogic breaths. So breathing in, kind of, and you can send the in breath there to the tailbone. And then just breathe in completely, breathe in a little bit more, send the breath right there at the spine, all the way to the third eye. And we're gonna go for four really deep breaths. Breathing in completely. So from there, we're going to go on our sides. So we're going to go for a twist. Um, last week I gave you this one. So you could go with that one again if you like that one. But I was going to take it up a notch um, to a little bit higher. So I was going to take this position. Um, so up to you. If you preferred last week, stick with it. If you want to try and move progressing with me. So it's working with that chest stretch we've been doing a few times now in this class. And opening with the chest, keep the ribcage lifted. Then swinging that twist down, just taking it towards that back foot. And then lifting up. Breathing out, threading the hand through. Breathing in to extend. Two more. You think about dropping the shoulder and getting that really nice open chest position at the top. And then from there, we're going to come down to the clam. So bend the knees, lift the feet off the mat, feet in line, 
with your hips and your shoulders as high as the hips, lift the top knee and lower. Breathing out left, breathing in lower. So we're just gonna do enough of these to get the glute meat engaged, so that around the back of the bum. <laughs> and this is a nice stretch for the neck. Take a check, you're still pulling in pelvic floor and TBA. Just a couple more, breathing out to left. Then straightening out the legs. Lift top leg, lift bottom leg, lift rib cage so you can slide your hand there under the rib cage. Lift the arm up and over for a balance. Extend, squeeze glutes and really, really kind of think about the length here. And then it's a little pulse. So the arms like a front crawl, side kick, sword fish kick. Four, three, two, one, and release and we go again. So leg left, leg left, rib cage, pulling in now pelvic floor and TBA. Extend right through the fingertips, thinking about this length, then pulse. Four, three, two, and one, release. One more time. Leg lift, rib cage, arm up and over, balance. Pulse. Four, three, two, one. Releasing that down, lift the top leg, hip height, or a little bit higher, flex the foot. Side kick and point the toe, bring it back. Try and keep this control in here so that that hip stays still. We see if we can get that leg up to 90 degrees for the hamstring stretch. Bring in the chest if you want hands behind head. Oh, I need a bit of space behind me. And then opening out. And then you can just drop the elbow down. Breathing out as the foot goes and flexes into that hamstring stretch. Still engaging with the core. Last one. And then release and we're going to do those four on the other side. So we started with the twist, so you've got the option upright. Threading the hand through, that's what we did last week. Or if you want to switch it, a little bit different. Opening with the chest, then taking a little bit of a different twist. You still have to drop the, sh the shoulder and then lifting up. So if you can go up on fingertips with the hand that's down on the floor, on either one of those options. Breathing out for your twist. Last one. Then bring it down to the clams. Ending the knees. Heels in line with your hips. Lift your heels up level with your hips. Notice what your feet are doing. So a little bit of tension there. A bit like maybe you were doing a squat, something like that, where balance and the arch is engaged. Try not to let the feet just crumble on each other with the arches dropping. Take that check, pelvic floor TBA is pulling in. Breathing out left, breathing in lower. Three more. Maybe you can get a feel if you get your hand on the hip, notice if this hip is working similar to the other one. Often we have differences. Straightening legs. Line yourself up, lift top leg, lift bottom leg, pulling in those core muscles, lift rib cage, arm up and over, really extending, reach and pulse, four, three, two, and one, release, and then we go again, lift and lift, rib cage, you can slide your hand under there, and reach. So the arms shouldn't be in that position, it should be stretched and reaching. Four, three, hold the balance. Two, and one, and release one more time. Double leg lift, rib cage lift, take this balance, put in pelvic floor, extend and reach. Four, 
three, keep breathing, two, one, and release it back down, side kick coming up, lift the top leg, flex the foot, bringing that forwards, maybe 90 degrees if the hamstrings allow, bringing it back with the pointed toes, and again, flex and point, adding in, you've got that chest stretch just dropping the elbow, and again, noticing the different difference in the different size to see if you can get the same range with the elbow dropping down towards the floor that you did on the other side. Still engaging with the core. Breathing out as you kick that foot to the side. Last one. Releasing from there, we're going to go on to our backs. So I can take a quick check on the time. How are we doing? Okay. So lying on your backs. Perhaps pelvic tilt. Find your neutral spine. Pull in pelvic floor. Pull in the TVA. Again, we've got the crown of head in line with the spine. So sometimes you have to think about the length of the back of the neck. Maybe you need a pillow here. Duck, tuck the chin down towards your chest. Knees, feet, hip width apart. Arms up to the ceiling, we've been doing this the last couple of weeks. Opposite, opposite knee, I'm going to go straight in. Opposite knee drops, opposite arm drops to the side. And think about the hips staying still. So don't let the hips open or the pelvis kind of tilt. So almost imagine you've got the band and the band's resistance in there. So we're just keeping that control, that pelvic stability that imprint as well. The lower back is imprinting down to the mat. And you're just getting these ever so slight kind of stretches on the inner thigh and the groin, but not enough that the hips are tilting. There's like enough control in here. Two more, breathing out to drop. Notice the other knee that's not moving should stay pointing up to the ceiling. And the feet, the toes, all engaged. So keep the arms facing up towards the ceiling, then straighten one of the legs so if you can point the toes. And then just a small hip circle. The same thing, you want to keep the hips still so the hips are not moving or opening. So again, it's most with pelvis stability. And also, notice how your whole body might want to tilt as the leg moves round to the sides. So, Thinking about the shoulders here imprinting, the pelvic floor pulling in and the TVA pulling in. Circle three times in the other way, round nice and slow. Doesn't need to be massive circles, lots of control and precision. And last one. Almost one breath here for each circle. And then we're going to switch legs. So first of all, just straighten the leg, point the toes. It's quite nice for the calf muscle. Then nice, slow circles. Breathing in, breathing out for each circle. The other knee should stay still. It's just like the move we've done before as well. The foot's a little bit engaged. The knee stays still. We're using pelvic floor and TVA to imprint lower back down to the floor. And I notice like my arms start drifting up for my balance. So go back and check what your arms are doing. Circle the other way around. Because your arms might be trying to keep your balance there too. Keep imprinting shoulder blades down to the floor. And last circle, keep the control. Keep it nice and slow. And then coming back to centre, knees, feet, hip width apart. We're going to go for our four toe taps, eight pulses, and then an eight second hold. I'm just tucking myself in. <laughs> so imprinting that lower back down. So I'll start with the beginner's layer. We'll go for five sets. Palms up for this, so shoulders are relaxed, opening with the chest. Four toe taps, right angles behind the knees. Four. 
and three and two. Hips are still not tilting side to side. And one, lift head and shoulders, look to knees. Pulsing the arms up and down and we're not kind of doing the queen moving. <laughs> we're doing nice strong forearms and wrists pulsing from the shoulders. And that kind of wants to make your tummy wobble, so then pull in your tummy muscles and that TBA. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slide hands towards knees, ribs to hips. Doesn't have to go too high to get that engagement there. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release, and we're gonna go again. Next level if you want it, tabletop it. Right angles behind the knees. In print, lower back down again, palms up. Keep that chest open. Four toe taps. Four, three, two, one. Lift and pulse. In print, lower back down. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Straighten legs, reaching towards the knees. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release, ready to go again. Four toe taps, four, three, and two, one, lift and pulse, tummy still, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, three and legs, reach, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, release, four toe taps, four, three, two, one, lift and pulse, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, straighten legs, reach, eight, seven, six, five, keep breathing, four, three, two, one, release, last time, four toe taps, four, three, two, and one, lift and pulse, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, straighten legs, reach, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release, take a full body stretch, arms over the head, take a big squeeze here, so point the toes, scrunch up the wrists, shoulders, bring your shoulders up to your ears, press the backs of the knees down to the mat, squeeze your glutes, pull your tummies in, Take a big deep breath in, you can even scrunch up your face. Breathing out, just let everything go so you can cactus out your arms, the chest can relax. Turn your feet to the sides so your hips can relax. Try to relax your jaw and your eyebrows. So from there, bend the knees, knees, feet, hip width apart. Coming back to imprinting and pulling in the core muscles. Heel slide, one heel away, and then bring it back up to center. Heel slide and lift, maybe hands on hips. Notice if there's any tilting or any lifting in the lower back. So thinking here about that imprint, that pelvis stability. Notice if you're holding tension in your shoulders. So if you can just let your shoulders relax. So if you feel like you've got your hips still, you want to go up a layer, tabletop it, and then single leg stretch from tabletop. Same thing, hips still, imprinting lower back down. And you can bring in these obliques as well, so arms up to the ceiling. And then the outside hand goes down to the foot, inside to the knee, through centre. Inside to the knee, outside to the foot, and then recenter. So you can almost kind of not grab, but you can take a little bit of a kind of touch on the knee to help you draw yourself over. You can work into that extension with the leg lowering down towards the floor. Thinking about the chin comes up towards the chest as well. Breathing out as you lift, breathing in as you recenter it. Two more. And last 
one. Hugging knees into chest, but mats, perhaps as a rock or a circle. And we'll use this position to take us into the double leg stretch. So just allowing the legs to extend up towards the ceiling, not too far down, and then come back and hug knees into chest. So extending, I'm so I'm starting to do anything with my arms yet, but we will. So as you extend, arms up over the head. See if you can knit your ribs together so the chest doesn't flare or lift. Imprinting shoulder blades down, lower back down to go into that double leg stretch. So last week I did a bit of a combination and I was going to have a little play again with that, but you do need space behind you. <laughs> she says, I was just thinking there's a wall there. So you take the double leg stretch, arms over, then you come towards your hugging, but you bring the arms down, you rock back, and then the legs go back over for a rollover. Then you come back to that position and then you open up to your extension. Touch, arms down for support, come back to a rollover. And then extend. I think last week I gave you the shoulder stand. This today let's go for the rollover to extend, work through hamstrings. Two more, keep working with the imprint on the double leg stretch. Extending at the back of the knee for the hamstring stretch for if you're rolling over. Last one. Then placing feet on the mat, bending the knees, arms out to the sides. If you haven't got the space, just cactus them out to the sides, it's breathing out, let both knees drop across to the side. So that's fine to us. Looking in the other direction for the neck release, the chest stretch. Breathing in, recenter, and then over to the other side. Again, just super slow and kind of really let the chest melt down into the mat. Progressing with that tabletop that Knees drift across and then extend out to the corners of the room. You get that real juicy sort of hamstring IT band stretch. Again, you want to keep those shoulders melting, chest stretching, breathing out into those extensions. Or if you're just wait, waiting now with that spine, the spine twist stretch. Just thinking about sending the breath to all four corners of the torso, breathing in completely. Last one, last breath. Then we're going to take hamstring stretch. So one leg up to the ceiling, then whatever you can hold on to. So maybe it's hamstring or maybe it's higher. But as you go, especially if you go for higher, watch your head's not lifting or your chin's not lifting. So your chest and your head, your shoulders is nicely relaxed. Your hips don't tilt as well. Sometimes we're trying to get ourselves into a stretch and our hips will compensate and tilt. Notice that the other knee turns out. So just try and keep everything in line and stable, like what we've been working with, the core bits. And then just take a, just a small circle for the ankle. And then the other way. And then from there to a glute stretch, so just flex the foot, place that foot across just, to, just above the knee. And you could either take, try and keep your hips square here, don't let them tilt. You can either hold onto the ankle and press the knee away. Or you could maybe take hold underneath the other hamstring and lift to take your glute stretch. And again, just working with a couple of deep breaths. And then we'll switch that over. So take the hamstring stretch, leg up to the ceiling, either holding hamstring or if you can, a little bit higher. 
Again, notice if you're tilting in hips or compromising posture. Then just taking a couple of circles for the ankle and the other way around. Pushing away at the back of the knee, really engaging with that hamstring. Check you're not holding the breath. And then come into that glute stretch. Just check you're flexing this top foot. And the hips aren't tilting. So just give yourself a moment to get adjustment there and just take a check. Maybe you can place your hands there on the hips. And you might want to be lifting up and holding underneath. Hugging that knee towards the chest. And we can go back to breathing to all four corners of the torso. So those nice, big, complete in-breaths. Check the chin's not lifting up to the ceiling. One more big deep breath in. Then coming out of that, maybe just a little rock up to a seated position. And we're going to go for a nice, slow kind of roll down. I know I've gone over time. I know that because the grandfather clock just chimed. <laughs> so anyway, a couple more, just a couple more moves. Flex the feet up to the ceiling so the hamstrings are engaged. Breathing in, lift the arms up to the ceiling. Breathing out, maybe just halfway down to begin with. Thinking about curving that lower back down to the floor. Breathing in, lift, get nice and tall. Breathing out, coming forwards. So if you can just touch the toes with the fingertips and then we can start working. So if we can go all the way down vertebrae by vertebrae, extend to that full body stretch. Circle the arms down and around, coming back up. It's a nice full body move. It's complete because we're getting that hamstring stretched. We're articulating down through the spine to that full body stretch. Using the breath as well to get the flow. Last one, breathing out all the way down, full body stretch. Breathing in, rising up. And releasing. Facing this way then, crossing the legs. Or if you prefer legs straight, we go for a spine twist. Just take the shoulders down and back, palms together. Breathing in, get tall. Think about the crown of the head going up to the ceiling. And then just breathing out for a very nice, small, slow twist. Breathing in centre. And you must get that real lift on the chest. And then breathing out, let the chest dip slightly around to the side. You should feel some heat there, either side of the spine. Two more, breathing in center and breathing out, round. one hand on the belly and then one hand on the chest. Four deep breaths to finish. Starting at the belly, breathing in, then sending it up to the rib cage, then right up towards your collarbone, and then releasing. And you can think about all four corners as well, the sides of the rib cages are too. Starting at the tummy, lifting it all the way up. Maybe you're getting taller as you breathe in.
last one. And then just a complete exhale and come back to your normal breathing. Palms together, namaste.